Here in this video, we are going to uh, discuss uh, a Poisson uh, distribution. Uh, this probability, this actually evaluates the probability of a usually small number of occurrences out of many opportunities in a period of time. It could be um, in an area, in a given area, or volume, weight, distance, or any other units of uh, measurement. And the Poisson distribution is given by this probability density function, f of x, is equal to lambda to the x times e to the negative lambda, and we divide it by x factorial, wherein x uh, ranges from 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. Okay, now we don't know up until which value of x uh, we, we, uh, we're going to consider here. That's because uh, there will come a time that for certain values of x, the probabilities will be uh, negligible. Okay, so going back in our formula for a Poisson distribution, we have lambda. So lambda here represents the average or the mean number of occurrences in the given unit of time, area, volume, or any other units of measurement. And E here is Euler's constant, which is equivalent to 2.71828. Okay, so you may be able to um, locate um, E or Euler's constant or Euler's number in your scientific calculator. All right? And uh, we take note that the Poisson distribution is used to model the number of events occurring within a given time interval. Now, here are some examples of uh, possible Poisson distributions. So say number of messages arriving at a telecommunication system in a day or number of flaws in a meter of fiber optic cable or death of infants in a year, okay, and number of misprints in a book for every five pages. So our unit of measurement here would be every five pages. Okay, and number of customers arriving in an R. All right, so our unit of interval would be for every R. Okay, now... Um, the concept of the Poisson distribution uh, was actually derived in uh, 1837. Okay, and this was named after uh, the French mathematician Simeon Poisson. Okay, and its first application was actually the description of the number of deaths by horse kicking in the Prussian uh, army. Okay, so here. Um, the Poisson distribution was actually observed, okay, when uh, the Prussian army, um, instead of, because they had the foresight uh, to collect uh, hard data, so instead of uh, simply blaming the victims for carelessness or blaming the horses uh, because uh, uh, of their viciousness, okay, uh, they have come up or they studied the death rates for uh, over a 20-year period. Okay, and um, within that period, they were able to um, identify that the death rates that were caused by uh, horse kicking actually would follow a Poisson uh, distribution. Okay, so uh, that was the first time our, uh, the, the application of uh, the Poisson distribution was uh, observed. Okay, now, so um, there are two properties of uh, a Poisson uh, distribution, and the probability of occurrences is the same for any two intervals of equal length. All right? And also, we take note that the occurrence or non-occurrence of an event in one interval is independent of an occurrence or non-occurrence of an event in any other interval. All right? So we keep this in mind because uh, we, uh, as we proceed with um, our examples later on, all right? so um, the Interval used, okay, or the unit of measurement used in a specific um, situation or problem, okay, would play um, a, um, a vital role, okay, and uh, we will observe that uh, later on. All right, let's consider the following example. Say, on average, lightning kills three people each year in the UK. So that means to say our lambda here will be equal to three. So again, lambda represents the mean or the average number of occurrences in a given time interval. So in this case, our time interval is for uh, every year or per year, right? So we are asked, what is the probability that only one person is killed this year? Okay, so here, in, um, in what is recorded in the problem is that our time interval is also for a year, okay, which is the same uh, time interval indicated in our problem 
which corresponds to our lambda of 3, um, or the average number of people killed in a year is 3. Okay? So uh, here, assuming that these are independent random events, so the number of people killed in a given year, therefore, will follow a Poisson distribution. Okay, so notice in this uh, probability histogram, all right, so there will come a time, okay, for certain values of x, the probability values becomes negligible. Okay, so we have what we call a Poisson uh, distribution. So going back to our problem, we define our random variable x to be the number of people killed in a year. Okay, so going back, our formula is given by P of x, or the probability of a specific value of x okay, is given to be e to the negative lambda times lambda raised to x all over x factorial. And we keep in mind that in our problem, our lambda is equal to 3, or the average number of people killed by lightning in a year is equal to 3. Okay, so plugging that in, our formula when x is 1 because we're looking for the probability that only one person is killed in a year or killed this year. So x will be equal to 1. So plugging in the values of x and lambda in our formula, e to the negative lambda and our lambda is 3 times 3 raised to 1, that's our x, all over 1 factorial. So I will need you to verify if indeed you will come up with 0 0.1494. Again, we are rounding up up to the fourth decimal place. Okay, so you can make use of your calculators. Make sure you know how to manipulate your scientific calculators. Or you can um, install a scientific calculator app in your smartphones. Or uh, you can make use of uh, Poisson calculators uh, online. Okay, now let's uh, continue. Let's have another example. See here. Arrivals at a bus stop follow a Poisson distribution with an average of 18 every hour. So we are asked to calculate the probability of five arrivals in an hour. All right, so take note, the average number of arrivals is 18 for every hour. So our unit or the time interval given in this problem is for every hour. So the average arrivals is 18 for every hour. Okay. And in letter A, for what is required, we are looking for the probability of five arrivals in an R, which is the same time interval in the given problem, which is for every R also. Okay, so that is uh, not a problem. All right, we will make use of the same value for lambda in computing for letter A. And for letter B, fewer than three arrivals in an R. All right, so our time interval here is also for an R, and that is the same as the uh, time interval that we have in the given problem that is also for every R, okay? However, for letter C, we're looking for the probability of 10 arrivals in half an R, okay? So if for every R, our lambda is 18, or the average number of occurrences is 18, what will be the number or the average number of occurrences if we will take half an R? Okay, because we cannot use 18 because it is only true for every R. So what will be the average number of arrivals for half an R? That is something we have to think about later on. Okay, let's deal with this one by one. So let's focus first on letter A. All right, in the next slide, um, we uh, define our random variable X, which is the number of arrivals okay, in an R. And x ranges from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. This means that zero, when x is 0, meaning to say no arrivals in an R, or 1 arrival, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, so on and so forth. In the problem, our lambda is 18 for every R. So you keep in mind that we will use this lambda if we are computing for probabilities for an R, okay, or for every R. And we take note of the formula that we have here. So for letter A, 5 arrivals in an R, that means to say x will be equal to 5. Okay, okay, since this one is of the same time interval as what is given in the problem, so we will utilize of the same value for lambda. So plugging in the values of lambda and x, which is equal to 5 in our formula, we have probability when x is 5 is equal to e to the negative 18. Uh, that is our lambda, sorry. And 18 raised to 5, and we divide it by 5 factorial. So I will need you to verify if indeed we will come up with this same value. 
Okay? Now, what about for letter B? When we say fewer than three arrivals in an R. So again, our time interval is an R, or for every R. And that is the same time interval as what is given in the problem. So meaning, we will utilize the same lambda. Okay? Now, however, when we say fewer than three, that means to say it's possible, or we are looking for the probability when there is no arrival at the bus stop, or only one arrival or two arrivals in the bus stop. Okay, however, I could not take three. That's because with what is required, fewer than three. Okay, so when we say fewer than three, x will be less than three. So in this case, we will need to get the probabilities when x is zero, add it to the probability when x is one, add it to the probability when x is two. Okay, so what I will do next is to solve for their individual probabilities. So I'm doing it step by step. So when x is 0, so plug in the values of lambda and x. So e to the negative lambda, which is negative 18, times 18 raised to 0. That's our x. And we divide it by 0 factorial. And I will need you to verify if you will indeed come up with the same value. Okay? So um, here I copied all the digits that will be displayed in your calculator so that Okay, I will only have to round off in the final answer. Okay, so that uh, we will have uh, no discrepancies in the values of your final answer in case that you are rounding off within your solution. So you might as well make use of all of the digits given in your calculator or shown in your calculator. All right, when x is 1, so when x is 1, e to the negative 18 times 18 to the 1 over 1 factorial. So we will come up with this value. In the same way, when x is 2, plug in the values, e to the negative 18, 18 squared, over 2 factorial, and we come up with this. So as what we have indicated here, we're going to sum all of their probabilities when x is 0, okay, when x is 1, and when x is 2. Summing that up, we come up with this value. Okay, however, we are going to round off, okay? In our class, I'm requiring you to make use of up to four decimal places. However, if all four decimal places or if the first four decimal or digits that you see in your decimal number are all zeros, you continue up until the first non-zero digit. So the first non-zero digit is two. So we round off up to here. Look at the digit to the right. Therefore, that will be approximately equal to 0 0.000003. Okay, I hope this is clear. All right, let's proceed with our letter C. Okay, now with letter C, we're looking for the probability of 10 arrivals in half an R. So take note, our interval now is half an R. So I could not make use of 18 for our lambda because it's only true for a one-hour interval. So what will be our lambda in half an hour interval? Okay, so you can actually make use of a graphical presentation here, okay? Or number line, right? We, we represent one interval for one hour, which is equivalent to 18. The lambda is 18. So if you take half of that interval, okay, so that will represent half an R, what must be the corresponding lambda so that the entire one hour interval should be equal to 18? Okay? So if you do it visually, you may be able to indicate there that the value of lambda is 9. Okay? However, if we are going to do it um, here using ratio and proportion, all right? That is, uh, the lambda is 18 for every one R. Okay, so I'm looking for the new lambda for half an R. So I have lambda values in the numerator. I will have the time interval or the unit of measurement in the denominator. So solving for lambda, all you have to do is do cross multiplication. So cross multiplying this, I will get lambda is equal to 18 times 0.5. And that will indeed give me lambda to be equal to 9. So meaning, the average number of arrivals in one or in half an hour is 9. That's because for one hour, okay, so twice of or two half an hours, that will give you one hour. So 9 plus 9 will give you a total of lambda, which is 18. So we're going to make use of lambda, which is 9, instead of 18. You follow? So when x is 10, which is what is required in this problem, so plug in the values, we have e to the negative 9, our lambda is 9, times 9 raised to 10 over 10 factorial. That will give us 0 0.1186. So I will need you to verify on this one if indeed you will come up with this uh, value.
Okay, so we end our discussion here, right?